there. Welcome to the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show. This is a Diwali edition of the show. Thank you for your patience. We are 10 minutes late. That's beyond our control. Sometimes these technical things just pop up like that. Our apologies, but we'll go the extra 10 minutes. Thanks for being with us, and we hope you enjoy the show. It's a special, well, it's not a special show. It's a Diwali edition of the show, and we have some very, very talented people in the Hindu Dharma religion that will explain to us what is the significance of Diwali. They won't experience it, Diwali. We have two of Guyana's leading pandits with us this evening. On my immediate left is Pandit Saranja Tiwari. On Pandit Tiwari's left is Pandit Naresh Prasad. And to my the extreme left is Rudolf Dayal, one of the um, practitioners, early practitioners of the Hindu religion. We will, we will start with, uh, alphabetically of course, we'll start with Pandit Naresh Prasad. Pandit has been a long, long standing Pandit in the Hindu community. So I'll hand over to him um, and then we'll open the discussion. Jen, um, Panditji, thanks for being here. Um, well, thanks for being here. All right, to all our viewers, my humble Panam, Sitaram, and Shub Diwali to everybody. Um, as customary, we'll um, commence with um, prayers, and I'll ask our my Panditji um, to lead us here, Sarindraji. Om Girisham Ganesham Galani Lavaranam Gajendra di Rupam Gunati Tarupam Bhavam Baskaram Bhushatangam Bhavani Kalatram Yabhaja Panchavakram Mahalakshmi Karu to Kalyanam Arogyam Sukasam Prada Mama Shatru Vina Sai Deepa Jyoti Namustute Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Mahalakshmi Mata Ki Jai Thanks. Padaji Am Pasad, you obviously are the more experience of um, the, uh, how long have you been a practicing Pandit? Um, well, uh, Freddie, I I haven't been practicing um, for very long, but I've been a, a, a very active Hindu, extremely active active Hindu all my life, and um, uh, but I grew up in Esquivo Coast, and um, I remember when I was about ten years old, um, a pandit could not. Um, couldn't make it to attend a function and he sent his 10 year old son to perform the puja and I was there sitting as a, as a little boy and I was very impressed with this kid and um, you know the thought came to me that I would wish to perform a, a Hanuman puja sometime in my life and this thought kept with me all the time and, and at around age 35 I, was, I went to sing at a function and the pandit did not turn up to this function so the person said, look, Naresh, use the guy here. You got to, we got the yard was full of people and you got to carry on this thing. I said, fine, no problem. And that was my first puja at around 35. And um, I do a little bit of it, but I'm more into singing and a very active life in the Hindu community. Oh, so you're not, you're not practicing mm -hmm. as a pandit. I yeah. do very little bit of it. You do um, like yes. like uh, Jandi and yes and yes and um, mostly mostly services to temples temple service I would do you know in the absence of pandit and so on but I'm I've always been an active Hindu across the country and not at a specific temple as such. Okay, uh, if you're watching us, um, if you're looking at the table, there are the deers on the table. I don't know if you can spot. The, it being lit up, I think because of the nature of the studio lights, you want you would not see it properly. But we have the deers here all lit up. To my um, left is one of Guyana's youngest pandit. Now, why somebody as young as you would have um, 
choose to be a, a, a pundit? Uh, Sitaram, well, I did not choose to be a pundit. Was your calling? I, was my calling. Because I came from a family <coughs> of pundits. My dad, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, they too were active pundits in this country. So it is only right for me at this to age carry on to carry on the family lineage and practicing pundit work. But Pandit Nourish said that he does a few of um, functions in relation to his pundit status, but you're full-time into being a pundit, right? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm full-time. Um, this, uh, to my extreme left is Brother Rudolf Dial. He has been a uh, staunch Hindu since he was very young and he followed the Hindu scriptures. So we thought we'd invite him here to come along and tell us a little bit about his life in Hinduism. Hi, Freddie. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having me on the program. And um, let me wish the Hindu community and all Guyanese a happy Diwali. We're still in the season of Diwali. Um, my part in, you know, being part of the, of, uh, the Hindu religion and everything stemmed from a very young age. I remember born in Esquibo, um at age six. I can remember as young as age six, I started going Mandir. As a matter of fact, those days I was a vegetarian. I never used to eat meat and all those things. But um, come to George Song in the 80s, it was a different situation. But my, you know, I always be part of the Mandir. At a very early age, I was uh, the chairman for the um, Dharmic Sva Youth Army, um, Dharmic Naujawan. So I spent quite a few years as a chairman there. We were a very vibrant group. And um, even after that, I continued to be involved in the Mandir, all activities that you know can foster better relationship between Hindus and propagate their religion. So I'm here still trying to do my best along that line. What is so, um, what is so great <clears throat> or what, I think it's generally accepted that the, the great religions of the world, Islam, uh, Hindu Dharma, Christianity. I was born into a Hindu family. My father played Tassa drum at Hindu weddings. And my mother, until she died, had her little altar in the home. Of course, I went the wrong way. I went into UG, studied philosophy, and left the Hindu part behind. Although I, I grew up there and I, I perhaps saw all the Hindi movies when I was 12, 14, 15, 16. But I, I went the, the other way, what you call the philosophical way. But I, I couldn't, could not conceivably think of giving my daughter any other name. I have one child. I couldn't conceive. It was unthinkable for me to bring a kid into this world and not give her a, a, a Hindu name. Her name is um, Kavita. Um, commonly pronounced as Kavita. Uh, but I think there is something so attractive about the Hindu religion, and I figured out it. It's probably the rituals. Um, I don't know if you agree, the, 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 the fascination with the different dimensions of a Hindu function. What do you guys think about that? Well, basically, Sanatan Dharma or Hinduism, it's an ancient culture. It is not a religion, it is a day-to-day -day living. We practice such every single day. Sanatan Dharma is lived by us every moment, by our thoughts and our actions, our words. It is our very Dharma, by the way we practice. It is Sanatan Dharma. It is very ancient. For me, and I will give you my personal experience, because I'm sure we all have different feelings and emotions whenever we sit and we sing bhajans and we, explains, uh, we explain the scriptures and so on. We all have different emotions added to it. Mm -hmm. For me, I will say it is the traditional practices that brings feelings and emotions. In the way you mentioned that you name your daughter Kavita, it is because of the traditions that was in still in you from a very young age by your parents, by your dad and mom. You only find it very fitted at that time 
to give her the name Tavita because of the traditional practices, the cultural values added to it. And our ceremonies, our ceremonies play a very important role in such going to temples, singing of the Ramayana, the, the various bhajans, observing Diwali for five days, and all of these festivals. If you look at the Hindu calendar, it is structured differently. We have Purnima, we have different days to fast. And I think this is, is where Dharma is. This is the richness of our culture that bring people together. And that's my experience uh, being a Pandit, performing uh, religious uh, functions and, and Dharmic practices. My name is um, Yeah, and let, me, yeah. let me touch on that a little bit, Freddie. You see, when we say that Sanatan Dharma, Hinduism is not a religion, it's a way of life. It's extremely diverse and it allows you freedom, so a level of freedom within this religion, this one religion. Because in this Dharma, you, 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 have, you have the Arya Samaj, you have the Hare Krishna movement, you have the Sai Baba movement, you have the Sanatanist movement, you have the Kali Puja worshippers, Kali worshippers within this Dharma. So when it comes to this ritual, it's so diverse and it's so wonderful that you have some persons who are Shiva bhaktas who worship Lord Shiva. They're, the way how they worship and they perform this thing can be so beautiful in their own way. You have Krishna worshippers that worship Lord Krishna, right? In India, you have some parts of India where they worship Ganapati alone, Lord Ganesha. Some state, they worship Hanumanji alone. So right within this one dharma, you have this freedom to choose so you're not confined to a particular name of God and a particular rules. It, it, it is very wide and open. You have that choice within this Dharma, right? So it's, it's a wonderful idea and that is why it is so rich, right? It is so rich and as you mentioned the rituals, when you sit to perform these, these, these pujas and rituals, you know there's so much a, a, a devotion, so much feeling, so much love in it. Right? And that is why it is being sustained up to this day and age that we are living in. All through the ages it came down and, and now it's getting better and better in my mind. You know. if, you, if you speak to a person that is immersed in Islam, um, there is a, speaking to that person, there is a feeling of wanting to go to Saudi Arabia where, the, um, of course, you know, where the holy um, shrine of Islam is. There's a feeling of wanting to go to the, the Arab world, which is the birthplace of, of Islam. And I get it's the same feeling with um, Hindu priests and Hindu devotees that they'd like to see India, at least touch India, at least experience where we came from. This is the birthplace of this great religion. Have any one of you been to India? Uh, not, no. But hopefully, no, no, no. no. no, no, no. I, I haven't been, Freddie. But there's a, there, as you rightly said, there's a desire that, that you can, if you get a chance to go, I would love to go to India to visit some of these places. But within our teachings, there's so many teachings within this Dharma that we're you're always taught that wherever you are. The there is Bharat. This wherever the, the Ganga flow, wherever this water flow of, of the Ganga that, that emanates from the Himalaya region, there is Bharat. So there's a lot of teaching in this Dharma that make us comfortable that you don't have to go to India. Wherever you are, there is India. There is Definitely. Bharat. There is where your Dharma really is. Really? So no big thing that you have to go there to get some blessing or some special thing. Of course, everybody, I personally would love to, to visit India, the place where our ancestors came from, right? But if, if that doesn't happen, it doesn't make me a lesser Hindu, right, in any way. <laughs> uh, when, can you, I, I can remember very good, some of my um, memories of, of, of growing up was at the Wally Fair. I, the last the Wally Fair, I attended as a 16-year-old guy, was at Gandhi Youth on Wilford Avenue. And I mean, I have those memories. I, 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 I could vividly remember my days attending um, the Wally Fairs at Gandhi. I haven't attended at the Wally Fair for 
sometime. But I, I wonder if it, the present day, the Wally phase, have that nostalgic feeling as, as in the 70s. Um, those, days, any... those years you used to have the, um, the sari pageant and all yeah, these things yeah, yeah, happening. Right. I don't think we have those things anymore. There's no the Wally no, Queen anymore. No, no, there's no <laughs> such thing anymore. Because what happened, I think, somewhere along the line, you know, those things, the, the whole concept was misused, you know, and it went in the wrong direction. So, you know, the Hindu leaders kind of move away from that. So there is a consensus among Hindu leaders that they don't want the, the Mr. Wally Queen anymore. Yeah, I would, I would, the fact that we haven't had that in maybe 15, 20, 15 years now, I, I would want to say that. Okay. Um, the the fears, I, I, I've grown older and I have lost touch with the fears. The fears are still... As, as nostalgic as in the 70s. Or we don't have the fear anymore. We don't have, we don't have the fear anymore. anymore. We don't have the Wally I thought that, anymore. I thought when do you have the floats, they end up at the fear at the um, no, that's, oh. that's not a fear <laughs> as such. Mm. You know, it's just a gathering of people there. They are, they are um, food and sweet meat on sales and they are games for kids. And they are a um, uh, show a cultural, goes, a cultural program. Show, yeah, yeah, a cultural program. program goes on. That's all that happens here. Yeah, and it's free to the public. Well, I haven't been. I haven't been in touch with fairs and <laughs> festivals of any kind. As I got older, I became more introverted. You know, Freddie, yeah. I, rem I, I think I remember the fair you're talking about. Long ago, we, they used to have this fair, Grand Mary Gone. There was a lot of games, a whole oh, lot yeah, of man, games that in was this my, fair, right? Yeah, Gandhi, you, you, you used to have Gandhi. these, these Taja Drum and all yeah, these yeah, things yeah. at this fair in, in the olden days, what you're talking and, about, you know, right? Those the, things should come yeah. back. The main thing was the Sari pageant. The Wally Queen. That was part of these fairs that they had. But there was, I remember at Farnham Grung. You would remember Farnham. in Sobrineville, yes, in Sobrineville. No, that, that used to be Pagua. Pagua. Oh, that Pagua was more Fair. mostly Pagua, Pagua, Pagua Fair. Yeah. The Wally Pagua. Fair, Dharmic Dharmic Gandhi Dharmic 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 Dharmic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why remember those days at Gandhi Youth when they used to have right. these big programs there? Um, but we, we do have a lot of cultural shows now uh, during this uh, occasion, Diwali across the country. You will have these cultural shows. Wherever they have motorcade, wherever the motorcade is in the country, they always end up at a, with a cultural show. That is what is popular now. Do you, do you, are you attached to a particular mandir in Guyana? Um, President Freddie, I'm in Garnet Street at Rameshwar Ashram. I've been there for a long time, but I... A long I meaning how long? Like about 20 years now, a little over 20 years. I've, I've been there a little permanently, but I work across the country in, in Mandirs. I, 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 I like to spread out. I am not confined to a particular Mandir or a particular organization, Hindu organization. And I enjoy that quite a lot. <laughs> Funny to have, you haven't lost your um, baby face. Um, um, how, um, which, which, um, which Mandir you specifically attach to all? My nourish? <laughs> well, b b basically, I move around a lot. I am affiliated with the Rameshwar Ashram at Garnet Street, uh, Uma Maheshwar Mandir at La Jealousy, um, Kovaran Mandir uh, Village, just before Suzdaik, uh, and a few other temples. Because um, we, we need to understand as well, it's good to practice our culture and have the cultural aspect. But at times, what happens, and I, I think by Naresh and uh, by Jihir will support me, Yes, we look at the floats. Yes, we, we light our diyas and we cook our sweet meats and, and we be merry on Diwali Day. But that's just Diwali Day. That is just Diwali Day. We need to live Diwali every moment of our life. We need to practice our culture every single day in our life. It's not only about going to the temples and sitting to do puja on Diwali Day. It is about practicing our dharma every single day. And I believe that as, as pandits, that we can do more. We can help to educate our youngsters. Because you said moments ago, you went the other path. Yeah. You went and studied uh, and went away a bit from yeah. Dharma. Yeah, yeah. But owing to that, you still have some of that inside of you to have us here on this program 
to discuss the importance and significance of uh, the Diwali traditions. And I believe that as pundits, we can do more to promote our culture. And this platform here, I made mention to by Naresh uh, last evening that it is very good of you to showcase our culture in this way. And we need more of this as well. And uh, Bharma as it is, is strong when we work together, when we come on board together, and when, when we work in harmony than to, to divide. There are many Mandirs I made mention that did not had Diwali activities. Why? Because uh, the traditional practices were losing it. The religious practices were losing it and many of our people, even pandits today, are caught up in the show case. The, 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 you know, the dancing and the pageant and the singing. And that's just for that day, what happens after Diwali. I, I often say that a person in knowledge, Diwali, is, celebrate, is celebrated every day. A person who lives without knowledge, Diwali comes once a year. And I'm sure my viewers will understand where I'm coming from. A person who lives in knowledge, Diwali, is celebrated every day. A person without such, Diwali comes once a year. And I'm sure our pandits, they will support me when I make such points. Yeah. Um, uh, growing up as a Hindu, I only, actually, you know, I am, um, because of the economic financial situation at home in Durban Street, I actually spent two years at an ashram in Quek Street uh, with a Swami there because it was a source of food when the day uh, came. So um, I, I attended Optin, Optin, um, with, 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 with Swami, Optin, Pujas, um, Jandis. Which one of the Hindu service you think is more closer to the inner, inner, inner core of Sanata Dharma? Puja, Jandi, um, the wedding ceremony, or what more, whatever more you have, which you think is 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 closer to um. So, basically, puja means an offering to that divine. Uh, puja means homage, means an offering to that divine force. Jandi is basically a term that we use traditionally. That you know what we are going to this jandi, but is we are going to a puja. And by Narish mentioned, wherever puja is being done, that area is being transformed into Bharat Mata in India, Mother India. And I will say uh, that puja simply means an offering. If you do a, a wedding or what we call a jandi or a, a, a simple havan ceremony whereby you feed the fire, it's all considered offering. So any dimension of practice a puja is simple kirtan singing or simply going to temple you can connect uh, with that supreme and that supreme is is basically he he lives within you just have to tune in the right channels and that's bhakti that's devotion um i want to i want to i want to relate to you a very funny story about my early days growing up in hinduism there was a vedic mandir on Durban Street. I grew up on Durban Street, Wortmanville. And so where I grew up, the next cross street going east would be Hardiner. Then the next cross street would be um, what you call Cemetery Road, or Basinjan Road. And I remember attending a Jandi Day or Sunday, and I took about 12 bags of Persad. And carried it under the, the, the mandate. The mandate had, uh, had a, <laughs> and when I came back, it was time now, the, uh, the um, Jandi finished, time to go home. When I went under the mandate, goat et out, <laughs> all, I think it was about <laughs> 10 bags of arm for a goat, goat et out. <laughs> that is one of my memories of growing up in the Hindu religion that I never forget. I mean, you know the food situation at home, so I collected ten bags of porsa. <laughs> and a goat. Put the, yeah, the goat when I went there, I saw the goat feasting. The goat feasting 
on on uh, on the poor side. Uh, I think when when you it when you born into a culture, even though you may stray into academia, philosophy, or your own profession, there is an attachment that will never be severed. Uh, and I, I see it. I see it when my daughter was born mm -hmm. that I could not give her any other name but, except uh, 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 yeah, yes. Not uh, only that, Freddie. You talk about moving from away from the religion to study and all those things. Mm -hmm. But we have we had cases. We have cases where people are leaving the religion, go to other religion. They turn Muslims. They convert into Christianity, but they still hold on to the culture. You understand? You, you, they still wear the, the Indian clothes. Well, I know, they, you know. My so. wife has her roots in Wakenham, so I have to. Uh, Wakenham holds a special place in my heart, so we, I go there. And those Christians are on a, a um, are on a conversion um, rush in Wakenham. But I think one of the reasons why Muslims and Hindus <laughs> tend to tend to succumb to Christian conversion. I don't know if it's still happening now. Is the thought that these Christian churches would take them away to 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 um to the United States? And I know I know a lot of those churches, those Baptist church and what have you, they, um, they they take people away to the U.S. I know I know one church in North Road, I think, or Cool Street. But I hope it is slowing up. Well, I think and um, pandit both pandits would yeah. agree with me. We are work, we, just before we came into studio, we were discussing a program that we have in, uh, in mind where we want to start early next year. Because what we find quite a few persons, Hindu family, are converting because of financial situations. And we, one of the problems I think are facing um, Hindus is that, you know, Hindus have a problem. You might find Hindu leaders going and sit down. We're going to pray with them and reach out to them. But when it comes to for us to go into our pocket to help our brother, Hindu brothers and sisters, we are very selfish in that manner. The other, the other religions see that as a, as a weakness on our part, and they capitalize on that. Because you find many times, once a Hindu have a problem, they would turn up with their whether it's gifts and all these things. And you know, which father or mother is going to sit and watch their children starve when they can just go to another religion or whatever and have them fed? And we have many cases like that in the rural area. And that is where our Hindu leaders need to work with for, with our people. You know, that is one of the biggest problem we have with in convert with we are conversionists concerning this country. But I find of the three major religions in Guyana, there is a real beautiful, beautiful mosque that was recently built, rebuilt on Church Street. That's 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 a mosque that can whose uh, attractiveness can stand up, stand out anywhere. Of course, there are resplendent mosques in the Middle East. And the Seventh-day Adventists and the Christian churches have built some humongous... But when you look at some of these mandirs dotted all over Guyana, they're in need of some injection of money. You know Gandhi Youth? Gandhi Bhavano in Gandhi Youth. Uh, Wolf in, Wolf that place, I know about that place. I used to leave UG as a student with our friends and sing Chow Tal when it's um, <laughs> a part. What time? Leave, mm -hmm. we finish UG. Uh, that place needs um, needs an injection of funds. It's the same place when I was... Uh, Back to what I was saying, Freddie. You know, we are not that generous. They, they, our Hindu some, leaders are not that generous. There's some it seriously comes to, rich Hindu you know, people in this country seriously rich you can almost say indecently rich so we need to we need to uh, reach out right. to them you know all right fred here now let, let, let me come back a little to the diwali thing this is a nice gap i love this interaction i i want to go back a little in time for the younger hindus and our viewers as to where we are with diwali practice now and how it was being practiced um like 30 40 years ago and um i'd like to touch on this a little freddie you had asked me this thing when we we spoke on the phone that i remember growing up in Essequibo. now we, we we hear a lot about this five days diwali celebration which pandit will touch on just now i'll ask him okay. to touch on touch on the five days 
But I, I want to go back in the 60s, mid 60s, late 60s, 70s. How Diwali, I grew up in Escobar Coast, how this thing was being practiced. And um, quickly, like, I remember like one month before, every family used to make coconut oil. There's great coconut and start by the coconut oil, right? And this, every family do this on, on the Escobar Coast, preparing for Diwali. This was like a one month preparation before, right? We make the coconut oil, we start get set. They got something called white dotty. We just go walk a long distance to go at the bottom of a hill and dig a hole down the hill to get a, a white clay. White wash. White wash. We call it white wash. And everybody just white wash their yard and their fence and thing in those days, right? That was a big family thing. A whole set of people involved in this thing. And then we would go to the back dam where you have this, this kind of a gold color clay from the rice field. And we would make, every family would make dia, yeah. right? Rodi will remember this growing up in Eskimo. Definitely. Every family will make these dias and start preparing this thing for Diwali Day. So it was a whole lot of preparation leading up to Diwali. When it comes to the family, everybody used to be involved in these kind of things, right? We make with dia and then Diwali Day, we have a grand celebration, celebration. right? So it was, it was very much like, involving a lot of family members and a lot of time in preparing this process towards Diwali. And now we have, we're hearing now about this, five days of Diwali. And I'll ask Pandit <laughs> Surendra to ch touch a little bit on this five days for the younger Hindus. So, so Diwali is celebrated for five days. And I'm sure that many Hindus up to this day and age of technology, sometimes they'll ask me, Pandit, how come Diwali cel uh, celebrate for so many days? Because we grow up and we are told that Diwali is just one day. But the scriptures are saying to us that Diwali is celebrated for five days. Uh, we celebrated Danwanti Trayodasi Friday, mm -hmm. whereby Hindus will worship a Tulsi plant. And we are praying to Danwanti, the Lord of Medicine, to bless us with good health, strength, and comfort. That's the first day. And we light a day at the base of the Tulsi plant in honor for Danwanti, the Lord of Medicine. On that day, doctors and nurses and, and those who practice medicines, uh, they worship the Tulsi plant on that day. Uh, the second day, which is Saturday, we celebrate Narak Chaturdasi. It is believed on that, on, on that day, Bhagawan Krishna, uh, an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, destroyed the very profane and malicious king by the name of Narakasur and he freed uh, the citizens uh, of Dwaraka Desh Puri from uh, the dragnet so to speak of that wicked demon and we on that day we light a deer in honor of Bhagawan Krishna and I'm sure that you also know Uncle Freddy that on the eve of the Pavali we light Yamdeep Yamdeep yeah, Yam yeah. And Yamdeep is made uh, with the regular coconut oil and the normal cotton wool. Or now we have different dias, mm -hmm. as you can see here. <laughs> but I I believe that uh, that tra that we stick to sometimes our traditional practices by having our cow ghee and Uncle Narish made mention about our dias and so on. And this dia is is lit uh, at the four corners, and we are saying to Yam. Uh, which Hindus believe that he is a god or the angel of death. We are saying to to God in that form of Yam to free our families from death and to free our families from sickness and accidents and difficult moments, so to speak. And the other day is Mahadi Pavali. We worship Mother Lakshmi. And uh, many Hindus worship Mother Lakshmi because uh, she's a goddess of wealth, prosperity, and glory. And and I'm sure that many Hindus are listening to this program and they would have listened to Bhaiji as well. And I'm sure that many Mandirs, they need your help. They need help. So you can reach out. Use this Dipavali to help the less fortunate, to, to help the Mandirs. They need your help. We celebrate Dipavali. And it is believed that on that night, it is the darkest night, Amavasya, Titi. It is the darkest night on planet Earth. And you know what? I'm not saying this, but the scriptures mm -hmm. are saying this. It is the darkest night. And the, the Rishis and Munis of then time, and that, that was more than 5,000 years ago, 
says that Diwali is the darkest light. And today NASA, modern science, is saying that it's the darkest light. That is Mahadi Pavali. And the other day, which is today, Monday, we celebrate Govardhan Puja, where Bhagavan Krishna lit the, the Govardhan Parvat. And for those viewing, it is the same mountain that Hanumanji lit to save Lakshman's life. And of course, Tuesday tomorrow, we celebrate Bhai Buj, whereby brothers pray for their sisters and vice versa for their happiness and long life. And your sibling. Yeah. I want you, you're too young, so I'm not going to put this question to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I put this question to, to you too, yeah, because he was, um, he was the leader of the Utam of the Dharmic Sabha, mm -hmm. which is in Prashad Nagarjuna, yeah. right? And you've been a practicing religion a long time. Do you fear, or you don't have any fear, that do you fear that the Hindu religion, Hindu practitioners, people who are born into Hindu religion, accept the, the Hindu culture? Do you feel that in Guyana, with this internet, social media, bringing the whole world into one small area, do you fear that there is a, 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 a lessening of the Hindu population or it's growing? In other words, do you feel that the practice of Hindu culture in Guyana is assured? Yeah, Freddie, I, I'm very, very confident that, that the practice of this dharma, Sanatan dharma, means an eternal way of life. And um, right now, because of social media and all these um, communication, um, it's having a real big impact, a big positive impact on this dharma across the world, right? Um, there are some countries in the world right now where you might think they would ne have never been Hindu practices or Hindus mm -hmm. there, Correct. where Sanatan dharma is being practiced in a real big way, yes. right? So I know it's expanding in the U.S. It's expanding in, in, Russia, Russia, in Russia, in Africa, in, Africa, yeah. in Europe, all over the world. Sanatan dharma is expanding in a real big way. Yeah. And because now these messages, you can sit in your home now and you can listen to persons like Satguru, Right, and all these great saints now know their message are already coming out of India, and it's having a real big positive impact. There are some negative things which we cannot pay too much attention to, really, but it's more positive than anything else. And I'm very confident that this Dharma is really doing well. And it's and as as it named, you know, we have survived so many years of all these invasions yes. and so many things yeah. and everything and and we're getting stronger and Strong. stronger every day the dharma is getting stronger and stronger every day but i think one of the one of the remarkable one of the remarkable achievements in world culture not i'm not talking about guyana i'm talking about world the world and its cultures and its people one of the remarkable achievement in world culture is how the indentured laborers from India was able to retain that culture, preserve it, and maintain its richness and its it, 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 its um phenomenal character. I mean, imagine what I named Frederick, and obviously is a reason why I named Frederick. Um, actually. I, I may be a mentally disturbed person. All my life I've probably been mentally disturbed because I named Frederick, which is a German word, and Germany and the Germanic race is at least on my mind. I mean, um, I, if I had a, a West Indian name or an African name or an Indian first name, I mean, that's the world I belong to, Africa, Asia, but I happen to have a German, Germanic first name. I, I should have changed it a long time ago. But um, the, 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 when you think of how these people came here and preserved their religion, it's a phenomenal achievement in world, in world culture. Look, look at us today. Hindu, Hindu religion is as strong as it was in 2023 as in any year. That has to be 
a miraculous phenomenal achievement of our uh, ancestors and i think it's something that we sometimes takes for granted correct you know the, 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 the tribulation that these people went through when they came here 180 something years ago you know and we who are you know we who are here to take this religion forward sometimes when you look at the way some of our old Hindu brothers and sisters behave, you know, yeah. it's the begs the question, <laughs> you know. So we need, we need to become, you know, more conscious about, you know, the, the what our foreparents brought, the the sacrifice they made, and you know, we as we as custodian of this this great religion, you know, what we how do we go forward with it, you know, and that's why, as I said, we were having a conversation earlier. And we have some things planned. Maybe someday we can come back next year. We can come yeah, back yeah, sure, 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 sure. You have a, um, you have an open invitation. Definitely. Next, wait. Let's stop there. Um, you're talking. You you're talking to what what are, what you call people like me? Hey, um, what's it, um, uh, I'm a philistine, so um, I wouldn't um, I would know I about the nice the the the, the beauty of these religions. So, when next is a major, apart from Pagwan Diwali, when next is a major Hindu um, Ram Nauni? We, we have uh, Mahashivratri. When, when is uh, that? But to be correct, we have Kartik yeah, on the 26th yeah. of this month. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. too early. Day. That's too early. Yeah. When is the next um, major Hindu thing? If it's yeah, um, we'll up next we have, yeah, uh, next you will you you will be here. We have that's an open tree. that's an open invitation. That's an open invitation. When it, when if it's Pagwa is the next, we'll arrange a a, a Pagwa program. We have Mahashivratri. So so right. um, Freddie, before I I notice the time is is is, is going, but no, I, no, let I, me I, see what time we have. Okay, we have twelve minutes. Right, we started twelve minutes late. So we should end at 9.30. We're going to end at 9.42. So we've got, um, we've got 12 more minutes. I, 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 I want to touch on, on, on four aspects of Diwali. And um, this would go for other observance like Pagwa too, right? Um, like whenever we think about Diwali, we, we, we look at um, the deep spiritual aspect of Diwali. The moment you think about this, oh, world, oh, um, the operator, um, say eighteen minutes more. So right? we've got time. Um, we've got time. Thanks. So the moment we think about this, the word Diwali comes to mind. We're thinking about prayers and fasting, and the whole family mm -hmm. indulges in this fasting. And people fast according to their ability. Okay. Some people fast for twenty-one days. You call this vrat. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people fast for 21 days, some people for a week and, and you know, mm -hmm. according to how they can manage fasting and they fast a little differently, too. So we think about fasting and prayers. And that is where this 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 we benefit spiritually from all these celebrations, all these great celebrations that we have and observances. And during these occasions like Diwali, you have the cultural aspect of these occasions where you have all these countrywide program. Let us discuss the motorcade. Just touch on motorcade a little bit. Like a month or two months before, all these children that you see on this motorcade across this country that is involved, they have to get out there to start preparing and design all these things and get themselves, get their, their, their garments and get everything prepared for this occasion, right? So it's like a month or two of involvement with young people. So culturally, a lot of cultural things happen. You got to prepare songs. You got to prepare music. Musicians got to be involved. So this is how the, the cultural aspect of this dharma is being disseminated to the younger generation when we have these observances. So culturally, this is how we stay strong culturally also and we preserve the cultural aspect. And then when you have things like Diwali, you have the social aspect of these occasions where family come together. Friends come together. People from other religions get involved. You, inv you know, we live in a multicultural, multi-ethnic society. People from all race, all religion get involved in these national events. If you look at on the night of motorcade, the amount of people that leave their home and come out there to just look at these get things, a of, get a view of the motorcade, right? So socially, right, we benefit from it. And then 
when you look at the commercial aspect of these events, right, is 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 millions and millions of dollars because you think about one occasion, Diwali, the amount of food that is sold, the amount of you name it, everything that is being used in this occasion, and this happens across the world, right? Mm -hmm. Where millions or billions of dollars come into circulation. So people who have business, like in India, people who sell gold, jewelry. Um, during Pago, during Diwali, everybody believed, there's a belief in this thing that you should buy a new utensil for your home or you should buy a piece of gold for your spouse or somebody in your family. So uh, clothing, clothing. you yeah. think about clothing, the amount of clothing that they mean. So, so everybody makes some money, everybody in business. Think about people in, in, in farming, people in manufacturing and, and people who, who do the actual wholesale and retail. So it's a whole chain, a whole long chain of people that benefit from this occasion commercially, spiritually, culturally, and socially. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing if you sit down and, and look through it carefully. Yeah. Um, I know people, people looking at this make, um, you yell at me for it, saying something now, but I just thought <laughs> I just thought it would in, it, I just thought I would say it uh, to add some lightness to it. But I think the last Diwali, Mr. Wally, we had, I think that was the last one. And I wonder if that had anything to do with the abolition of uh, Mr. Wally. The last one I think we had there was a controversy and a lady went up and snatched the crown off of the head of the winner and put it on another arm. <laughs> I don't know if you could remember that. I, uh, I, I, I remember something like that happening. Uh, the, um, and the, the, <coughs> the point is, those, uh, those things should not be associated with Diwali. Correct. You understand? <laughs> and I think Hindu leaders would have probably reached and decided that, listen, this is not in keeping with the message of Diwali. Diwali. You understand? Mm -hmm. Having our ladies parade in saris, that's not mm -hmm. Diwali. You understand? So all those things, I guess our, our religious leader would have come together and decided against having these, these shows. Well, I, yes. I, I can't understand why in 2023, you have Miss World, Miss Universe, you have these uh, uh, um, uh, young ladies just going up on stage in swimsuit, in this kind of, I mean, should I thought we were finished with Again, that? I'm, I'm glad there's this nothing to do with the exactly. With nothing to do you with have, Diwali. You could have the ladies going up and, and, and model their saris, but don't brand it as Diwali. As Diwali yeah. uh, find some other name for it. You understand? And, and that, this is a huge problem. Even on Diwali night, uh, this is a really, really huge problem. On Diwali night, people have uh, different kinds of activities. Bars operate. Barbecues and all these things. and lying. And it should not be so. It should not be so. Diwali is a religious uh, festive season for Hindu. It marks the arrival of Sri Ram from exile to Ayodhya. It's a religious day. And I'm not being biased, but let me say this. On Good Friday Day, the bars are closed. Nothing operates on that day. And Hindus need to take a stand. Yeah, yeah. And they need to defend their religion. You need to take a stand, Uncle Freddy. I want to just digress mm -hmm. a little bit, though it's relevant to what you say. Mm -hmm. This is an unbelievable country that nobody could understand. Do you know the percentage of Indians in this country? Well, you have to break it down by Hindus, Muslims, and Christians. But uh, the Indian percent Indian percentage is um, forty nine. Forty something, yeah. Right. The uh, African thirty nine. The mixed race is uh, 20 something. Do you know I wrote a column? I do a daily column and I wrote a column of something I have heard about 18 months ago and I still hearing it. Massey Supermarket and Gifland Supermarket. I know um, the owner of Gifland Supermarket, Roy B. Pat. We talk. And uh, um, we would have some serious conversations. You know the percentage of Spanish-speaking people in this country as compared to Indians. And Massey Supermarket and Giftland Supermarket 
play Latin music that if you don't understand Spanish, you don't understand anything they're saying. And you could go into Gay Fran Supermarket and hear Spanish music playing, but you never hear Hindu music playing. I never heard Hindu music playing in Marti Supermarket and Gay Fran Supermarket. And that is a colossal insult to, to the Hindus and the Indian people of this country. Really, what, what I've noticed is not only... Even on the radio Pardon me, I know, I know we're going to go back to the world. Even on the radio station, or you don't hear, you hardly hear Hindi music playing. Hindi. What have been, what is coming across now as Hindi music is these, um, so these, the, these, ch ch the ch 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 and, and that so they, they, they take the, you the, don't hear the oldies with Kishore you Kamal. You don't and hear them anymore. Oh, maybe they'll catch in. <laughs> See, there you go. So yeah, it's not only, you know, even on the radio station, when you think about Indian music, they bring on a, uh, Chutney music, the songs that they take, they yeah, they. they well, I don't think Spanish song. people are two percent of this. No, you, have you have a point. You have a point. And you have I go into the different supermarket <coughs> in Arma. Latin music is blaring. Latin music is blaring. Well, we need to talk to Mister B. Part of that. I will. Sp um, I wrote the column. I know he 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 reads my column. Um, um, I know the Marseille people read my my stuff i did a column on marseille last week in which they raised their breakfast from 500 from 450 to 950 and they lunch from 950 to 1650 so I, I know them but i can't understand why someone would put on latin music in a supermarket where in that supermarket for every one latin person who enters and buys there is about 25 um, Indians that enter and buy. This is a country you can yeah. so... In, all, people in, in the Hindu religion, there is a term they say, Atiti Deo Bhava. Mm -hmm. We say your guest is like God. So I guess um, <laughs> the, the Mal, Litu and, and Masi, they're being, you know, they're, they're practicing their Hindu culture. <laughs> they're being at a concert. I don't want to get into any controversy yeah. because I'm talking to two pandits. Just decline and we'll move on. Isn't there a council in, in this, isn't there an organi central organization that trains pandits? Well, basically we have, uh, to my knowledge. I know the pandit council had some we, problems we, there. Uh, no, uh, the guy in the pandit council, uh, we don't have any problems there. Oh, oh, it's, but... it's over. I know on the um, Burnham time. <laughs> that's, that's a long time that's, ago. That's, 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 um, in that's a long books. time ago. Yeah, okay. so basically we have, uh, to my knowledge, uh, we have two major Hindu organizations. Number one, Dharmic Sabha. Dharmic Sabha. And we have two, the Gaine Pandits Council. The Gaine Pandits Council, they train pandits and they have medical outreach every so often. You're part of that? I'm part of it, yeah. Every so often. And I'm, I'm sure... Yeah. But you can elaborate on they have, they have uh, uh, pandit classes at the Kendra yeah. in Prashad Nagar. Regular pandit classes. Let, 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 me, let, let, let me stop here for, for my knowledge. Um, you can become a pandit in Guyana. I know you can become a Swami or a Sheikh in Islam. You have to go outside. Right. But if, you can become a pandit. You can become a trained certified pandit in Guyana. Yes, if you feel that this is a life you want to live and give up the many gratifications of the world and this is a path you want to go down to serve your people to serve your culture and religion and to serve god then that's it you go ahead but you have to serve being a pundit you have to serve you have to serve you have to be out there and sacrifice yourself to serve and this is a beauty of serving by Narish can tell you this the beauty of being a pundit you get to serve you get to reach out, you get to console, you get to help. This is the beauty of being a, a pandit. But I won't say that you need to go uh, to a direction to learn pandits, uh, to learn a pandit work. If you want to go, you can go. But for me, I did a lot of self-study. I studied by myself. Yes, I had tutors around, like my gurus and so on. And my narration is a, he's an example of such. My narration, I shared such, uh, such relationship but I believe that it is the duty of every Hindu to learn the religion, to study the scriptures. 
because right next to me you have a masjid and every Friday rain or no rain sun or no sun children will go to their masjid children will go to their masjid and it's it is a duty right by mm-hmm. Naresh apart from being educated uh, academically it is a duty of every Hindu parent to make sure their children attend mandir not only attend but to participate Party, to learn the harmonium to learn the drumming and to learn the singing and more so we are losing uh hindi the hindi dialogue we are losing it and i believe uh, at the mandir level of a pandits can introduce this to help to teach uh these uh practices and so on this is not this is sanskrit right yeah this is sanskrit you know sanskrit yes i can read it you can read it yeah Okay, great. So, so you have some some writings here. So you have Om Namah Shivaya at the back. You have Om Samsara Sada. You have Namanda Ramaya at the back, and there's a few others, right? You have, for example, you have Nana Maha. You have a few of them here. You have Dharma Raj. You have a few of them. You have Mahadeo and so on. I think I am. Um, I think I may become a pandit. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, not, you're never too old for it, Freddie. Uh, uh, Freddie, now, well, now you asked you asked about the pandit training, and and yeah. I like love to touch on this on um, on air for our viewers. Um, there's a gentleman named Pandit Munish Danraj. Um, he 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 brought some guys from India here, at least four of them, who were in a squibble station in Eskimo and they're conducting classes full-time Hindi Sanskrit Pandit courses harmonia drumming and so on in Eskimo so there's quite some young Pandits coming out of that class in Eskimo right now and I think I'm very optimistic that in another year or two um, Eskimo will have enough Pandits to take on you know what what got to be done there in, Probably in that line. Probably judge some with some. Yes, yes. So, oh. so there is some movement, some positive movement in this direction. Uh, what's the um, what's the relation with the pandits that have been trained in Guyana and that have graduated in Guyana and the Coven Join Ashram? I think uh, by Naresh will, will answer that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 Freddie, you know, for years, for years now, we've been going to the Kovajan Ashram. They have their own unique system, how they function. They work through the Swami order, right? So, like, like pandits don't operate yeah. in, in, in their system. They come through the Swami order and they have their training programs and they take care of their system. Right? There is a, there is a, 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 a home, ba- there is a resident Swami. At Coven John, yes, right? yes, always. And you guys are, you guys are familiar. You guys have a relation with Swami Akshavananda. It's built a school in Colin yes. Ida, and it's mm-hmm. doing well. Yes, yes. Uh, just let me, just let me wrap up. Um, we have to go. Uh, if you're looking at us on your TV screen or your um, smartphone, to my extreme left is the former chairman of the Guyana. Dharmic Sabha, Rudolf Dial, youth arm, <laughs> youth arm of the Dharmic Sabha, has been a, a member of the youth arm for over twenty years, I think. Next to him is Pandit Narish Pasad, one of Guyan, Guyana's longest practicing pandit, and one of Guyana's youngest pandit is next to him, Pandit Sarinjit Tawari. We will start. We will close the program with the closing words from um, Brother Dayal, then we go to Pandish Naresh and Pandit Sarinjar. Uh, Freddie, once again, thanks for having us here. Um, I surely look forward to be here in the future to discuss other um, programs, Hindu programs. And um, I want to re- um, leave by saying to my Hindu brothers and sisters out there, go to your Mandir uh, every Sunday um, it is really supposed to be this religion that we're we're happy to be born in. You know, we need to keep the flag of Sanatan Dharm flying high. So please continue. Go to your mandir and pray every Sunday. Pandit Navish? Yeah. Well, I I want to once again wish all our Hindu brothers and sisters in Guyana and all of Guyana 
on every Hindu across the globe, a happy, happy Shubh Diwali to everyone. On the Tuari, your closing remark? Well, I want to wish our viewers Shubh Diwali as well. And I wish you Bhagawan Sri Ram's blessings. And uh, let us continue from where uh, our ancestors would have left. When they came here, they had nothing like mandirs. They sat under the people tree and they, they sang Ramayan. And when our foreparents came, the first thing they did, they planted the, the red flag, the janda, the Hanumanji flag, because it had this faith and determination that wherever they go, they will practice this dharma. And you maintain such faith and believe in your dharma as well. And Uncle Freddy, uh, thank you. And I will borrow this quote sometime. Yeah, I'm selling it. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. You're selling it. Yeah, yeah. How, how much you give me for it? Huh? I bought a little 50,000. I could do it. Yeah. No, man. You said to give us it. We are pundits. <laughs> um, but you're supposed to. Um, it's huh? weak. I had the pool. Huh? Uh, you were looking at uh, the Wally edition of the Gildari Freddy Kisun show. Our guest was the former Utam of the Guyana Dharmic Sabha. Rudolph Dayal, practicing pandit, one of the youngest pandits in Guyana, Syringa Tawari, and one of the enduring pandits of Guyana too, Naresh Prasad. Thanks for being with us. Happy Diwali. It was yesterday, but today is officially Diwali holiday. Have a pleasant Diwali night or evening. We will see you on Wednesday. And as I normally say, well, based, I normally say catch you later, but based on what our three Hindu practitioners have said, keep the faith, man. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah,